Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, American hero and aerospace icon John Glenn goes west. Electric powered airplane sets a record. DOT wants improved UAS oversight by FAA. I'm Brie Cross, it's December 9th, 2016, and this is Airborne Limited. John Glenn has headed west. At 95 years of age, America's third astronaut into space and the first American astronaut to orbit the Earth has passed away. Our sentiments and the sentiments of everyone who remembers those dangerous and heroic first days of space travel are best represented by a tweet that was issued by NASA immediately after his death, which reads, quote, We are saddened by the loss of Senator John Glenn, the first American to orbit Earth, a true American hero. Godspeed, John Glenn. At the time of his passing, he was surrounded by his family, including Annie, his wife of 73 years. Glenn was the last of the original Mercury 7 astronauts and the third to take flight at a time when every launch into space was fraught with danger. That was well proven when Glenn's flight had to be cut short for technical reasons that left him wondering if his re-entry into Earth's atmosphere was even survivable. The flight was a success and Glenn was recognized as a hero. Because of the physical injury he suffered in a freak accident at home, he was removed from flight status, but he devoted his energy and vision of the future by becoming a U.S. Senator. It was not until October 1998 that he flew into space again on the Space Shuttle Discovery to become, at age 77, the oldest person to ever travel in space. A great American has now slipped into the history books. We at ANN offer our condolences to the Glenn family and our thanks for his service to our country. Walter Extra, the famous aerobatics pilot behind the Extra series of aerobatic planes, has set a Federation Aeronautique International world record in the new field of electric-powered planes. On November 21st, Extra flew a battery-powered plane and climbed to 3,000 meters, that's just under 10,000 feet, in a time of 4 minutes and 22 seconds. In doing so, he broke the FAI world record for electric-powered planes that weigh between 500 and 1,000 kilograms, which equates to between 1,100 and 2,200 pounds. The flight was performed in an extra 330 LE airplane powered by a Siemens electric motor that delivered approximately 230 horsepower and weighs only 110 pounds. It's said to be five times more powerful than previous comparable systems. The flight was called a technical milestone by Siemens. Frank Anton, head of e-aircraft at Siemens, said at the time, quote, This day will change aviation. This is the first time an electric aircraft in the quarter megawatt performance class has flown. The FAI news release says the new system means that hybrid electric planes with four or more seats will now be possible. After the break, the FAA to step up to the plate on UAV oversight. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Explore no limits flying in the FAA certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Limited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The Department of Transportation Inspector General's Office initiated an audit of the FAA's processes for approving civil UAS operations and overseeing the safe operation of UAS. Among other things, they concluded that the FAA's process of issuing UAS commercial operator waivers does not verify that operators actually meet or understand the conditions and limitations of their exemptions either before or after the application is approved. 
The report also said the agency has not established a risk-based safety oversight process for civil UAS operations, which is a key tool for focusing resources on a range of emerging risks. Six recommendations were put forward for improving FAA oversight of UAS operation, which included initiating a periodic process to perform inspections of commercial UAS operators based on operational factors to verify knowledge of and compliance with FAA requirements and to inform the development of a risk-based oversight plan. The IG said the FAA concurs with all of its six recommendations to enhance the effectiveness of FAA's oversight of civil UAS. It's Friday, and that means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. John Glenn's achievements are legendary, but Jim best remembers him from a breakfast table conversation that took place 13 years ago and was part of a friendship that spanned many years. Here is this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Brian. Hi, folks. And once again, we come up with not the greatest of news. Um, just a few moments ago, we've all learned that John Glenn has passed away at the age of 95. And once again, an extraordinary gentleman who led an equally extraordinary life. Um, I don't know what's happening lately. We've lost such amazing men. I fear that this is a trend that I would love to see stopped right here and now. And I think of some of my last conversations with Bob Hoover, where all of his concerns were not about his past or how he might be remembered or considered, but his desires and dreams for a future. And it reminds me of a conversation I had almost 13 years ago to the day, I guess it was the 17th or so of December 2003, where I sat down to breakfast with a number of friends and, God help us, John and Annie Glenn. Now, despite the fact that I'm sitting with a figure from history and some of my other uh, friends around me are equally agog at the fact that this is John Glenn, the real honest to God John Glenn. As pilots, the conversation immediately deviated to the planes that we'd flown, the adventures we'd had, and it turned into this really amiable, fun chat about all the things that we loved about aviation. And a little bit about the future. And even then, John Glenn's concern was not about being idolized or remembered for the things that he'd done, but for where the future of aviation and aerospace would go, how the kids would have access to airplanes and flight and be able to be their own space explorers someday in the future. And this is a common theme I'm finding among my heroes, the people who not only made history, but made history worthwhile. Uh, this was a constant theme with Bob Hoover. It was certainly a constant theme with the recently departed Ron Alexander, who was an equally extraordinary gentleman in his own way. And 13 years ago, it was one of the things that John was so concerned about, the future, inspiring, empowering, and developing a future that, while different from everything that we had done in the past, was something that could move mountains, move societies, move communities, and move the world. And in and amongst uh, a bit of joking with Annie about how we wanted to buy a motorcycle and how she'd make a really great motorcycle mama, and I'm not kidding about this, this really happened, and some grins and some gags and some this and that, it just turned into this lovely discussion of a bunch of flyers. Some flew hot aircraft, some flew not so hot aircraft, some flew spacecraft, but there was this immediate bond. And where do you in this world get a chance to sit down with your heroes and feel a kinship, feel pride in who they are and what they meant to you, and feel hope for the future? So as we again say goodbye to an extraordinary hero and one of significant importance to yours truly, we do the best we can by honoring their memory by focusing clearly and aggressively on the future so that the f heroes that they became to all of us might somehow inspire heroes in the future who will do the same for the next generation. Godspeed, John Glenn. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. 
After these messages, the Pacific Aviation Museum, Pearl Harbor, dedicates its aerological tower. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics personal jet kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Pacific Aviation Museum, Pearl Harbor, held a dedication ceremony last week to mark the completion of a $650,000 restoration of the historic Aerological Tower. This facility served as Flight Control Center on the day of infamy, December 7, 1941. More than 100 World War II veterans, including Pearl Harbor attack survivors, were flown to Honolulu International Airport aboard an American Airlines Honor Flight. This allowed them to be there for the 75th Pearl Harbor commemoration events being held throughout the island of Oahu. An economic impact report by the Los Angeles World Airports conducted by the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation has been released. It concludes that Van Nuys Airport contributes more than $2 billion to the local economy and supports more than 10,000 jobs. The Stratford-on-Avon District Council in the UK is continuing its fight to help save businesses at Wellsburn Airfield from closure. It's claimed the closure would be destroying businesses that employ more than 200 people at this time. Flight Star Corporation has announced the completion of their new Hangar 10. The 31,000 square foot maintenance hangar will serve as the primary facility of the Flight Star Airline Division and will be used for maintenance operations of larger corporate aircraft. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. One of the founding members of x -Corps has gone west. Loretta Alita Jackson DeLong passed away last Sunday. The Midland, Texas reporter Telegram reports that according to x -Corps founding member Jeff Greeson, there would not have been an x -Corps without DeLong. Greeson said she was the one who inspired him and others when they were laid off from the Rotary Rocket Company. DeLong started as an engineer at an Indiana Institute of Technology co-op, working on the Gemini project for the McDonnell Aircraft Corporation, according to an obituary sent to the paper. She went on to join the U.S. Air Force and then worked for Xerox as a repair technician. She had been the office manager at Rotary Rocket Company, while Greeson, Dan DeLong, and Doug Jones got x -Corps going. Earlier this year, she and DeLong were married. We at ANN offer our condolences to Dan DeLong and other family members, both inside and outside the aerospace industry. Alita was a unique and always welcome presence in our industry and a dear friend. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Limited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend. We will see you Monday.